Here we are now, and we're your people. We've come from all over Jacksonville, the north, the south, the east, and the west. And we've gathered in this building tonight as your church. We've been called out of our homes to the house of God. You said your house should be called a house of prayer for all people. And Father, it is in your house that David said he longed to be in because it's where your glory dwells. It's in your house, Lord God, where you have summoned your people to come and give you praise and give you worship. It's in this house where we can hold on to the altar and pray and intercede on the behalf of people, on the behalf of our nation. And it's in this house, Lord God, that we've designated these 21 days, consecrated and set it aside expressly and purposely for corporate prayer where we can come and talk to you together collectively not about what you've done not about our ancestors not about how it used to be but God we've summoned the people to come to look toward the future our future hangs in the balance to deal with the current crises of this world to deal with the decadence to deal with the perversion to deal with the licentiousness, the lasciviousness that pervades our earth. It is as it was in the days of Noah. Men are running around acting like there is no God. There's no fear of God in the land. People have turned the grace of our God into lasciviousness. People are denying the only true and living God. And Father God, we come together as your people. We come together, God, knowing that there's threats of wars and rumors of wars, earthquake and divers places, pestilence and famine. Knowing that mothers and daughters are at odds with each other and fathers and sons. Knowing that our prisons are filled disproportionately. Knowing that crime runs rampant. Knowing that no real street is safe. And we come to you, God, knowing that there are incurable diseases as man goes. Knowing that the financial condition of this planet is awful. Knowing that this nation is in turmoil, even between itself and its leaders. Knowing that our Congress is divided. Knowing that our Senate is divided. Knowing, God, that there are liberal Supreme Court justices knowing that there are people at the ACLU, Lord God, who are feeding all of these atheistic, God-hating people with information and legal counsel and advice. Laws and rules are being changed. They're trying to teach gay history in our elementary schools. They're, they're affirming and approving same-sex marriage. People are accepting this as a new normal. So, Father, as we look ahead at the future for our young people, our young people, God, who think that life is all about hip-hop, who think that thug life is an option, who don't realize that that life leads to death, that that lifestyle can never produce life for anybody. And yet there's a spirit that is causing our children to rebel against the parents and rebel against authority who think they'll be young for the rest of their lives. It's a hedonistic society, Lord God, where pleasure is the end of so many people that if they can just feel good, have what they want when they want it and they'll even blame you for it and say you're blessing them but tonight God we're your people and we come to you right now believing that if you've ever sent revival if you've ever moved mightily for your people that you'll do it today and God we have the promise of you doing a new thing we have a promise, God, of rivers in a desert, of a highway in a wilderness. We have a promise, God, from your word, 
that you've given us a happy ending that all things are working together for the good to those who love you to those who are called according to your purpose we have a promise Lord God from you that you'll never leave us nor forsake us that we can come to you boldly in this our time of need and obtain grace and find mercy to help us this is a time of need we have a promise God that you'll protect us and keep us in a time of trouble you'll hide us but more than that, God, we have a promise that we overcome the world by faith, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So we pray now, Lord God, for a spiritual awakening around the world, that kings and leaders, that shawls, that people of authority and people, Lord God, who claim to know you, that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened that they'll come to see that there's only one God and beside him there is no other God. That Yahweh God, that Jehovah God is God, that Adonai is God. And Father, I'm praying now that through the lives of your people that miracles, signs, and wonders will be done, that souls will be saved, that lives will be changed, that diseases will be healed. And the world will see that you're still God and that you still use your people, that you still bless your people. And whatever this new Red Sea is in our lives, that Lord God, you'll open it up and let us through. And God, when we come through, we promise you, we promise you we're going to give you the praise. We're going to give you the glory. We're going to give you the honor, Lord God. And I thank you that we got it better than those in the days of the Red Sea. Because we have your promises, we realize that we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We don't have to wait until we see the victory. We don't have to wait until we cross over our river, cross over our sea. But we can give your name praise in the midst of our struggle. We can give you praise in the midst of our dilemma. Like Jehoshaphat, God, we're surrounded. The enemy's coming in to eat up our flesh. But we thank you, God, because your word says they'll stumble in their fall, that you'll protect your people. So, Lord God, all over the world, our troops that are in Afghanistan, in the Middle East, in Israel, God, I pray that you put a hedge of protection about them, that you'll keep them. Those who are members of our church, Lord God, that you'll go before them and camp angels about them. I pray, God, that we can pick up a paper one day or turn on the news one day and the head of NATO or the, the head, Lord God, of some European uh, alliance, Lord God, has come to know Jesus Christ. Uh, I pray, Lord God, that a, a revival flow through our White House, uh, a revival flow through the State House, uh, a revival flow through City Hall. Lord God, all over the world, that revival break out uh, in penal uh, institutions, Lord God, that wardens get saved, that, that gangbangers get saved in the prisons, Lord God, that for who realize, Lord, that their life hangs in the balance, that they'll never be free in the natural, but they can be free in the spirit. Open our eyes. Open the eyes, Lord God, of people who are trying to say that there is no God. So we pray for a spiritual awakening. And then, God, we pray for personal revival, personal holiness, personal commitment to you a personal dedication of our being, our children, our stuff, our substance. God, we want to make a covenant like Job did with his eyes that he would not look and lust. Help us, Lord God. I know if we had to uh, evade it completely, we'd have to leave this planet. But God, just help us, God. Help us to purify ourselves. Help us, Lord God, to sanctify ourselves wholly. God, we need revival. We don't need anybody to pump us and prime us, Lord God. We don't need to have to wait on a worship leader, Lord God. We don't need to have to wait on a preacher to say, come on, talk to me. Come on, say something to me. But God, I pray that you would give us such a renewal, such a revival, that where we go, people follow us, that when we show up, things change, Lord God, that the manifold grace of God in our life will impact our communities, our jobs even the roles of our church where we sit. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for you're greater than all. So send revival. 
Send revival, Lord God, to us personally. And we thank you for it, Lord God. And Father, give us a passion for souls. Father God, help us to see that you saved us to save others. You blessed us to bless others. So Lord God, give us a burden for our neighbors, our co-workers, our family and our friends. Don't let us just play with them, Lord God, and not present to them Jesus Christ. So God, give us a burden. Give us a compassion and a passion for souls. Help us, Lord God, to desire the salvation of others. Help us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, lastly, for financial breakthrough in this house, a financial breakthrough in our individual homes, let us, Lord God, continue to rethink our giving and rethink our commitment to the tithe and the offering. Let us know, God, that you brought us together, put us together, and, Lord, it is so everything that we need is in the house. Our little enough, it is enough to meet our need. So, God, we're thanking you for all of this, and we're thanking you for all of that, and we believe, God, by faith that it will be so in the name of Jesus. We believe it in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, before we see any of the manifestations, these 21 days have come. It took Daniel 21 days to get the breakthrough that he sought you for. But God, I love your word. Your word says you heard him on the first day. So God, we know that you've heard us tonight. And if you hear us, then we know that we had the petitions of the things that we ask. So Father God, now in the name of Jesus, send a spirit of joy, send a spirit of peace, Send a spirit of praise in this place right now to where, Lord God, we don't have to wait to see it, but we believe you so much for it that before we cross over, we're going to shout with the tambourine, with the high-sounding cymbals, with the harps, with the keyboards, with the voices. We're going to sing the song of deliverance on this side of our deliverance in Jesus' name. Everybody up on your feet. Everybody put your hands together. Everybody throw your head back. Everybody give God a shout. Everybody give God a praise. Everybody thank the Lord for what's coming. Thank the Lord for where you're going. Thank the Lord for a new thing. Thank the Lord for strength. Thank the Lord for revival. Thank the Lord for renewal. Thank the Lord, come on. Thank the Lord for what he's going to do. You should have been dead. It should have been over. You should have been bankrupt. You should have been repo. But God has taken care of you. Hallelujah. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Salvation is coming. Deliverance is coming. Ray Ray is coming. Pook is coming. They're coming. They're coming. The homeless, the needy. They're coming. They're coming, they're coming. They're coming, they're coming. Save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. Deliver them like you delivered us. Bring them out, Lord. You are able. Do it your way. And do it now. Do it your way. Today is the day. Now is the acceptable time. People of God. Let's celebrate what God's going to do. Thank Him for what He's done. But celebrate Him for what He's going to do. He's going to turn it around. A new thing. A powerful thing. Something you've never seen. Something you've never heard. You shall live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. You shall live and not die. I had lunch today with a woman. She's from Africa. And we went by the beauty salon. Eden Spa in the mall. As she walked by, I said to her, your hair will be real easy to do. It's very, very short, very thin. I said, I'm going to take you in here. Anytime you need to get your hair done, you need to come here. You need to go in here. 
I said, you like your hair like that? She said, I love my hair like that. She said, I just had six months of chemotherapy, and it's just growing back. And I love every bit of it because I'm cancer-free. I'm cancer-free. You never know what somebody's going through. You never know why some people shout. You never know why some people dance. You never know why some people are crying while you're standing there rolling your eyes. You never know what some people have been through. Y'all not helping me here. Here I am commenting on her hair. Here I am trying to help her out. And she said, I love my hair because you don't know what I've been through. I have been through something. I love my praise. I love my shout. I love my dance because you don't know what I've been through. You don't know the hell I've gone you can stand there and look sophisticated. But I promise you, there's some stuff that'll make you shout. But God said, listen, the devil ain't stronger than me. He said, I'm going to do some stuff. It's going to blow your mind. And people are going to wonder why you won't sit down, why you're running around this building, why you're acting the fool. And some of y'all still can't figure out why some people just take off running and take off spinning. You think it's funny, but you don't know what folk done been through. You think it's funny. I'm going to get people. I'm going to get people out of jail. And I go downtown and I stand at the door, wait on them to come out. And when that door come open, I'm joking, be running. They run out of there. They ain't slept all night. But they come running out of there just happy to be free. It's just something about people's countenance. It's just something about people's motions and actions when they know they're free. Why don't you take about 30 seconds and thank God that you're free. Hallelujah. Come on, 30 seconds. Free. Hallelujah, free. Glory to God, you're free.